Hi, this is Mother Mantis. I have just finished quite a long gaming session playing the Veil Guard, and I thought before I signed off for the night that I would spend a couple minutes giving you my first impressions of the game. I probably have about 11 hours or so into it now. Um, it's quite late at night, so I'm trying to keep my voice down. And I'm still gathering my thoughts as to what I think about the game, but I have enough time in it now that I at least have gotten a first impression and some the beginnings of some opinions about what I think is up with the game and and uh, why I think I understand a little bit more about why some people absolutely love the game and why others are saying they really don't like the game at all. Um, this is not going to be a spoiler um, chat. It's just impressions of the game. I may give a couple examples, but I'm not going to talk about the story itself. So I don't think it will really be spoilery, but just in case, here's your warning. So the game opens up, as many people know, with a prologue scene and quite a big, quite a comprehensive, I should say, character creator. It is possible, and there's beautiful hair models and whatnot, but by and large, I felt that it was difficult to make a female character model that wasn't very angular. I mean, there's, they're very muscular looking, and there are not sliders that allow you to make anything but a fairly muscular looking female. Let's put it that way. So I thought that was a little bit interesting. It definitely serves its purpose, and the character models and the hair are certainly way more attractive than they were in Inquisition. That's, I mean, there's not even a comparison. They're way more attractive. Um, and then once the game starts, there's a big, long exposition. You know, there's a cut scene, yada, 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 some stuff happens, and a long lore dump in which the narrator, which is Varric, sets up the premise of the game and gives you kind of a lore dump about, you know, kind of what led up to this happening. It's a lot of information. Obviously, it's both a reminder for the pet players coming in from past games and it's um, information for newcomers to the series who have no clue, you know, kind of what the premise is and why is Solus doing what he's doing and who is Solus and yada, yada, yada. I'm going to start with the stuff I didn't like because there, there is stuff I like, but there's some definitely some things I didn't like. I want to get that stuff over with. I think the game does a lot of telling rather than showing. A lot of the narration and a lot of the conversation and a lot of the of the things that you hear said in the game are just telling you information that you need to know in order to move the game forward. They're really it's really just uh, one version or another of it's basically just information dumping. It's just exposition. A lot of the stuff that you hear is just trying to get information into you. And so you know to go from here to there and you understand why you're going to go from here to there. And why did this person do that? And why did that other person do the other thing? It's a lot of telling rather than showing. I, I think there are other ways they could have handled it. And it just comes off as, to me, a lot of information coming at you in the least graceful way possible. Um, the other thing the game does, which I found disconcerting. Well, I'll start with this other thing first. I, my character model is a, I'm playing a female elf who is a veil jumper. I usually would play a gray warden, but I decided to go with veil jumper because I thought, well, that'll be good. Veil jumpers are listed as being primarily elves. They live in Arlathan Forest. They have a specialty in the Fade and how the veil, uh, the veil and the Fade. Um, obviously, as an elf living in Arlathan Forest and being a Dalish, she would be pretty conversant in the elven gods and her own elven history. So I thought she, she'd have some unique and interesting dialogue options. Uh, and she'd definitely know who Solus was and kind of the history there and whatnot. And interestingly enough, although... All of those things make are commonsensical to me. Once we got into the game, or once I got into the game with her, she didn't seem to know anything about anything. There's an early mission that you do that takes place in Arlathan Forest in which you meet one of your first companions, which happens to be Ballara, who is the veil jumper, and she is an elf. And she, during your interactions with her, she fills you in on a lot of stuff having to do with the fade and the veil and talks to you about solace and this and that and your thing. And your character, my character anyways, who I purports to be a specialist in this stuff, doesn't seem to know anything that she was told. She has all the same questions that Harding and the other characters have. And I just was kind of puzzled that like, do you not know your own history? You don't understand who Solace was? I, I just really was puzzled about these sort of dialogue choices that she had that, that, that came off as if she had no idea. Like, are, are you even an elf? Do you understand? I mean, surely you know who Solus is. 
I just thought it was very interesting. And it was very, for me, it was very immersion breaking. And I did end up wishing that I had chosen to play a Grey Warden or another faction where I would, that would have made more sense that I wouldn't, my character wouldn't know those things. Uh, I am going to stick with the character though, and we'll just see what happens. But I think for those people who, who haven't played yet, or they played or have started, a, if you haven't played yet, I would suggest that you play one of the established factions like the Grey Wardens or one of the other factions that wouldn't necessarily be expected to know those things. That That's my two cents on that. I just thought it was it's a bit immersion breaking to have your elf not seem to know anything about your own elven history other than she keeps saying, our gods have escaped. And it's like, well, they have, but you don't seem to know anything about who they are or what they, I don't seem to know anything about them. The other thing is that the game spends a lot of time telling you things instead of letting you interpret literally anything for yourself. And this is probably my single biggest beef with the game so far. I think the game gets in its own way. And what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example of an interaction, which isn't really going to, it's not a spoiler. There's an interaction you have early on with Solas in which uh, it's the second interaction. It's, it's, it's not your first interaction with him. And in your previous interaction with him, you apparently have said something that offended him or insulted him or something. And so when you see him the second time, he says to you something along the lines of, are you going to insult me again? And as he says that, a little hint comes up over to the edge of your screen and that, and which happens a lot in many interactions, a little hint comes up over on your screen and it says, Solus remembers that you took a verbal jab at him last time you had an interaction. And I just thought, why are they telling me that? I mean, it's, I'm not, I, I'd have to have the, I'd have to have the IQ of a doorknob to not have figured out that Solus clearly remembers that I insulted him last time we talked. He just told me he remembers. And that happens a lot. Something will happen on screen, a character will say something to you about it, and while you're reading that, a little explanation bubble will come up telling, interpreting it for you. It, it, it doesn't give you two seconds to interpret it for yourself. The game tells you what just happened. Often when you get into a new area, you walk into a new area and, you know, there's a crystal over there that you have to shoot, or there's a ladder you have to climb, or whatever, the interaction, you have to figure out a way to move forward through an area. The game does not give you two seconds to look around and figure out what you need to do. You're three steps into the area, and one of your companions will say, look, there's a ladder over there, and a crystal on top of it, and a gate over there. It looks like you need to shoot that crystal, go up that ladder, and then walk over there. And it's like, could you have given me two seconds to think about that for a second? I mean, it, that's frustrating to me. It's I don't like being talked down to that way. So I found that very frustrating. Um, and on that topic, I'm not that far into the game yet, maybe 12 hours, but there have been no intelligent puzzles in the game like there were in Inquisition where you have to kind of figure out the floor pattern or figure out which way to turn the statue in order to get you know this thing to happen or whatever. There are literally crystals that you have to shoot with your wand or with your bow or whatever. There are literally crystals that you have to shoot. They're very obvious. They're right out in the open. Your friends will tell you right where they are so you can shoot them. It's just that same mechanic over and over again. There's there's no thinking about anything that you have to figure. There's nothing, nothing to figure out. I, I just don't understand why they appear to have dumbed it down as much as they ha appear to have dumbed it down. And, and it's it feels like it's been curated for somebody who's not very smart. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to put it. Solus's involvement, unless he gets really involved at the end, which maybe he does. I mean, he might totally be involved right at the very end, but Solus's involvement has been very marginalized. You, you, he's just really never on screen very occasionally. Varric is the narrator and that's, it doesn't play much part other than that, at least in my experience so far. The TLDR, I think, of the stuff I don't like is, I think in prior games, the way they set up the lore and the story and the way they told the stories, they wanted you to be immersed and they wanted you to think. They introduced complex topics and sometimes controversial topics, gritty topics, and they wanted you to think about those. This game does not want you to think. It, it just wants to tell you what to think. Now, having said all that, let me tell you what I like about the game. It's absolutely gorgeous. People have said that the game is absolutely gorgeous and it absolutely is. I should say absolutely one more time. The game world is beautifully realized. It's a little, it is very linear. I will say that it's very linear. Each 
quest or mission is presented in sort of a chapter. There's a little narration at the beginning, a little narration at the end. So it is very linear, very linear. But once you're within a mission, when you're moving through it, it is very pretty. It's a very Dragon Age looking world. I've really enjoyed kind of moving through some areas that are clearly very Dragon Age, but areas I haven't seen before, you know, in previous games. I do like some of the character interactions with the companions. You won't get the real snappy conversations like you get in previous games where, where some of the conversational things you would hear in the background or things they would say to you were actually pretty funny. Um, you don't get those in this game. They're very, the, the, the things that they say are very bland. But the, but the companions themselves are interesting. And I do like um, the way they interact with each other. I am enjoying kind of building the companion friendships that I'm building. I am enjoying the main story. I'm engaged with the main story and I'm interested to see where the main story goes. So they have done a good job with that. I definitely can see what people love about the game. I really can, especially if you're a newcomer. But for those of us who've played the other games, I think there's a bar that's been set that that isn't being reached with this game. Um, I'm hoping to change my opinion. I have heard that the ending of this game, the last five, six hours, is extremely impactful. I'm really hoping that that's true. I've heard the ending's very good. I, I hope that as time goes by, I love it more and more and more. And I hope by the time I finish it that I can say I unreservedly love the game. But right now, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with it. That is all for now. I hope um, you have a great evening. And if you're watching this during the day, then enjoy your day.